This episode of 3D Printing Nerd sponsored by Matter Hackers. Hey, good to see you again. It's Joel. Last time uh, we were right here, we were talking about these incredibly awesome, good looking, stronger than they need to be drawer poles that I made with the Nylon X and printed on the Pulse XE. They're cool and I like the feel, I like the touch. We did the modeling in Fusion 360, but there's some comments I need to address and there's some upgrades and updates I need to do. So let's get to it. I'm Joel and this is 3D Printing Nerd. One of the things I wanna talk about is, oh, you guys, you, more than one person commented saying I needed to 3D print some sort of door stop or drawer stop or end block or something to keep this from happening. You, you kept saying that the drawers need to stop, right? They need to stop so I don't have to keep pulling them out here to where they need to be, but I can't do that. Let me show you why. If you look from the other side here, these are my drawers. I've installed a single high five blue handle here to kind of give you an idea. So the way that this desk was built was so that the drawers can open from either side. It's so tall that it's a lot easier rather than having to walk around to just open up a drawer, grab your glue gun and then push it back. And then if you need the glue gun on the other side, you just open the drawer, you grab the glue gun and you're good to go. Now that you know that this desk actually has drawers that open from both sides, what we need to do is install drawer poles on this side because we need to be able to just open the drawers from either side. But according to comments, there's a better way to make the model. So let's go to Fusion 360. Here's the model. Remember, we did this in Fusion 360 in the last video and someone had a really good suggestion. What they said is rather than just hoping and praying that this part would work out, I've added a 0.2 millimeter extrusion right there. Let's take a look. So here is what I did. I added a, well, it says minus 0.2 because of the direction, but it's a 0.2 millimeter tall <laughs> extrusion right there in the center. And I gave it a join so that it became a part of the model. And of course it was mirrored, it went over to the other side, but, but here's what happens when you do that. I'm loading up uh, the Prusa edition of Slicer because it gives the, the, the best way for me to kind of show you what's happening. So let's add in the drawer pole two and three because three is the new one. And well, here they are. We're gonna slice it at point two. That's, that's nothing out of the ordinary. But when we go to preview and we bring it down, oh, did you see it? Let's zoom in a bit. Here we go. So as it comes up and right, Right, oh, right, right there, right, there we go. So what you can see happening is right here, the slicer is actually building a bridge across this space right here. Whereas over here, it's bridging some of it, but it's also trying to draw two perimeters right in the middle. That's where I was kind of hoping it would just get through it, but there is a better way. And thanks to everybody that left this comment, because as you go further, then the bridge now supports everything and you're left with a 0.2 millimeter layer to drill through or screw through or whatever. And since it's gonna be hidden parts, you don't care that you're really drilling or screwing through it or poking through it or whatever. And you get a better part, better extrusion, better compatibility, better reliability, all sorts of better, better things. Hold on. Now here's what I want to do. I want to show you what it looks like in Cura because I'm going to print it on the Ultimaker 3 using the High 5 Blue. And if we go and prepare, it's going to slice everything. I'm doing it at 0.15 millimeter, which is normal for the Ultimaker 3. And I'm going to go to layer view and I'm going to scroll down a bit. So let's zoom in and let's see how Cura takes care of this. So Cura takes a different approach. I don't know if it's probably configurable. I haven't really looked into it, but the bridging pattern is actually on the diagonal. Over here, it's doing the, the perimeters in the middle again, just like it was doing before. And if we go to layer 95, there we go. It's putting the perimeters and the rest of the floor right here. So this is obviously a better way to do it. I'm not sure though, because when I printed this on the Ultimaker, it didn't exactly do the bridging perfect. But again, we're not looking for perfection at this point. We're just looking for a more reliable print to do. That's what we did on the High Five Blue drawer poles on the Ultimaker because it was cooler. It was a great suggestion in the comments. And uh, thank you. 
Oh, before we get out of this view, I want to make sure you know, I did put a link to the models down to Gumroad in the bottom. I think I priced them at two bucks, which is great. And now that I've updated this model, I will of course update the files on Gumroad in case you did purchase them so that you have the updated models. Win. There is one other thing I did notice when I printed on the Ultimaker, so let's go take a look. Here it is printed on the Ultimaker and well, I don't think the tolerance or the clearance is quite right because the screw isn't just sliding in like it did on the models that were printed on the Prusa machine and on the Pulse XE. And I don't know if it had to do with settings for the Hi5 Blue or if it had to do with something else, but there is a way to get through this. We drill and I'm using a 7 32nd bit. Let's just kind of drill it out. I'm going at a very slow speed and let's, see, let's get past that point where that little bridge is. There we go. Ooh, I can see it in there. Huh. Now I believe the screw should be just great. The other test is how we can put the nuts in the slots and uh, maybe it over extruded a little bit. Um, well here, I got solution for that. I'm going to use my channel locks and I'm just going to press, get in there. There we go. Perfect. And I've got that icky bits in there to get out. At least it comes out pretty easy. I don't know if you can tell, but the, um, the nut doesn't line up. So now what I can do is use an end of this and just push it in. Turns out that just pushing with my hands wasn't enough. And so what I need to do is put something here for the channel locks to push onto, like this screwdriver head. There we go. I am marring the other side just a little bit, but I think for now that'll be okay. Looks like we're good. Now let's install. You remember this part where everybody said, oh, wow, metric is the way to go because Imperial is so terrible. Well. I can't say that you're wrong, that's for sure. Here we go, let's see, let's see. Remember, it's 16 and 15, 16. Good times, boy, the good times we had. Hey, at least my, my template is working out really well. I can probably do that. Let's make sure nothing's in the way. Another thing that someone left in the comments, I believe, was to put some tape, as that would keep the surface intact. I forgot to do that. Just want to get it attached a little bit. Didn't work. Yes, and it's on and it's good. All right, I'm going to get the rest of these installed and then I'll see you back on the other side because we have one more thing we need to do. This is the last one and I have some thoughts on this. I didn't realize it was going to be this difficult and I didn't know that there was going to be so much cleanup. I didn't know the Ultimaker wasn't uh, going to produce dimensionally inaccurate parts because of, uh, well, I guess I hadn't configured the material correctly. This is a lot more work than I thought it would be. I mean, in the end, it's all about learning and it's all about finding out what works, what doesn't, trying it on the next one. So what I'm doing, uh, I'm getting all the icky out of the piece and then I'm using these channel locks to gently caress the nut back into the hole. There we go. That looks just like that. I'm sure there are better ways to do this. Maybe, I guess I could have created some sort of tolerance gauge for the printer and the material before I went to use it. I wonder if I can use another nut to push on that and I can have the channel locks kind of give it a squish. Ooh, that doesn't work too bad. That is not too bad at all. So a nut right on top, the channel locks, give it a squish. There we go. With minimal marring on the other side of the piece. Let's get these installed. Last one. All right, they work. Look at that. They open, they close. There's a mess on the inside. I did have a problem at the bottom. And uh, for some reason, the, the, the nut had stripped out. There was debris behind it and I had to stick something in to keep it from moving. Uh, the marring on there isn't too bad, but it'll be a constant reminder of me learning. Well, we got these installed and I think they look great, but now we need to move on to the next part of the project. Now we've got these to worry about. This is the big 
cabinet. It's a big thing that I keep my fan mail in and envelopes and stickers and stuff. And I wanted to put the drawer pulls on here to make them good handles, but there was a problem. I have my template right here. And uh, well, let's just open up that side. So what I want to do is put it down here on the side so that I can put the handle here and it'll look great. So it'll be like that. But I want it to be even across the top along with the other side. So let's go back to Fusion 360. Let's change this template jig thing. And let's make it better for this application. Well, here we are. We're back in Fusion 360. Here's what I did. There's the, there's that jig, that template that we had where we had the little setter finder right there and this held it on, but I needed something different. So what I did was that, bam. Now you may be wondering why it looks like this and uh, I can tell you. So the side right here is gonna go on the side of the drawer and the reason it's nice and flat is so that it lays flat. I didn't need it, I wanted it to be more sturdy than this because I wasn't trying to find center. But then how did I base my decision for these sides to be out and how do I have it reference the top of the cabinet? Well, that's easy, let me show you. Now what I can do with this template right here is if I open this up and I put this like this, now I just need something flat to put along the top. In fact, the drawer pull itself can just is a flat surface. And so as long as I put it like this and I put that up to there and I know that's where the holes are going to go and that's where that piece is going to be. And the reason that there's no ends on either side is because I want to be able to put it here and I want to be able to do the same thing, just like that. Well, with this new template, I think we're gonna actually, it's gonna be pretty easy. I know that it's not resting on top of here and it's relying on me to put pressure on it. But again, I'm just marking these two holes and it's just giving me a good idea of where to put this. So let's mark some holes, let's drill some holes and let's finish this. Uh, look right here. I'm using these orange ones and there's a really good reason for that. My buddy Paul Jackman, he actually made a comment on the last video and he said, why don't you use the Jackman orange ones? Okay, for you, Paul, I'll do that. Also, uh, I hope you know who Paul Jackman is of Jackman Works, but if you don't, I bet Sean, my editor, is gonna put a link or a picture or something. Uh, he just recently passed, I think it was 100,000 YouTube subscribers. He deserves 100 times more than that because not only is he a good dude, but his camera work is fantastic and his builds are wonderful. And the dude makes gifts like you wouldn't believe. Yes, I said gif. Evan and Caitlin think it's gif, but they're wrong. You may see right here that the metal plate for the magnet, uh, it, I didn't even take that into account, but I, I guess it turned out okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Let's go do it to the other side and then we'll call it good. Yeah, let's do it. Ha ha ha. We did it, we did it, we're done, we're done. Here is the blue side. That's all high five blue right there, high five blue right there. And on the other side, it's of course the Matter Hackers Nylon X. And over here, it's the orange PLA that Jackman referred to as Jackman Orange. Awesome. Let's recap. Well, we sure had a good time today. I think the drawer pulls are all done. We got the high five blue. On this side and on the other side, we've got the Nylon X and the Jackman Orange, we're gonna call it. Yeah, we did it. Uh, I got a lot of mess. So let's talk about this for just a few minutes. Obviously, I did encounter some difficulties in certain things, and there's probably a multitude of different ways that I could have done something. If you spotted something that I was doing incorrectly or that you think I should look into doing next time to make it a better experience, please leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. I think that much like computer code, um, even if the code doesn't look well when you're making it, as long as the finished product looks okay and it works, <laughs> I think you're okay. And, and these work, these work. I'm, I'm pretty proud of the work that I've done. I know there's plenty of people out there that probably do an incredibly good job, a much better job than I do. But again, it's all about the process. It's all about learning. It's all about making and creating and bettering 
your environment around you. Thanks for coming along on this journey. If you made it this far, you're awesome. A big thanks to everybody that subscribes and rings that bell and supports me in various different ways. But for now, we're going to call it good. Don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys, as always. High five.